This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The night has passed and the day lies open before us, so let us pray with one heart and mind. We pray for God's guidance and protection and blessing for us. We pray for God's mercy on those troubled parts of the world. We pray for God's strength where people most need it. This week we particularly remember the children and young people returning to school and students preparing to return to university. We pray for the teachers and the staff in the schools and the colleges as they do their best to keep things as normal as possible and as safe as possible. It is fitting that our first hymn is The King of Love My Shepherd Is, Whose Goodness Faileth Never. We commit ourselves and our loved ones into the care of the Good Shepherd. Although God's love for us is constant, we have not always loved him. Our prayer of confession. Most merciful God, we have strayed from your paths and lost touch with the shepherd. We have been too concerned for self and have not sought your voice. Forgive us our failings. Restore us in your paths and guide us in our deeds that we may love you, love our neighbour, and work for your kingdom. Amen. May God in his mercy forgive us and restore us. Amen. Our reading is from Isaiah 51, read by Pauline. Listen to me, you that pursue righteousness, you that seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham your father, and to Sarah who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, but I blessed him and made him many. For the Lord will comfort Zion, he will comfort all her waste places, and will make her wilderness like Eden, 
her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Listen to me, my people, and give heed to me, my nation, for a teaching will go out from me, and my justice for a light to the peoples. I will bring near my deliverance swiftly. My salvation has gone out, and my arms will rule the peoples. The coastlands wait for me, and for my arm they hope. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look to the earth beneath, for the heavens will vanish like smoke, the, w- the earth will wear out like a garment, and those who live on it will die like gnats. But my salvation will be forever, and my deliverance will never be ended. A reading from Isaiah from 2,500 years ago, and yet remarkably relevant for our world. The world of Isaiah was a world of uncertainty. The people of Israel, well, their kingdom had been overrun. Their temple, their key building had been destroyed. The king had been taken away in chains. And all the leading people also were in exile. Their future was pretty much over. And yet for some they held to a faith in God, where many would have said God has either let us down or there is a stronger God who has conquered, or maybe there are no gods. And for us, we don't live in quite such a turbulent world here in the Turton area. Some do. For some, their world is pretty much over and they are refugees and migrants, looking desperately to find somewhere else where they can settle. But our world is a world of fake news, of various versions of events, all of which seem to be claimed to be true, of groups of people who hold to their view, to their version of events, of a world which seems to be becoming more and more fractured and divided, and with those divisions, greater and greater uncertainties. Uncertainties about what is true and uncertainties about the future. And in that context, Isaiah says to those who want to be faithful, look to the rock from which you are hewn. Look to the quarry from which you were dug. Where are you really founded? What is it that are your key foundations? And using this image of a quarry, and we have so many quarries in our area, quarries from which our churches were built, quarries from which I guess many of our houses were built. We understand this, that we can track the stones back to their quarry. Our churches were built from these quarries here. Quarries now silent and full of heather and insects, but once a hive of activity. Isaiah says to the people, look to the rock from which you were hewn, to the quarry from which you were dug. Remember that you are descendants of Abraham, the person of faith that God called and blessed. And I hope we know that we are God's children, that we are descendants by faith of Abraham and God's children, God's heirs in faith through Christ. You may remember a few weeks ago, we used the Latin word per mixta, which Martin Luther, the German reformer had used of the world. The world was per mixta in his time. It's per mixta today, confused and mixed. It was per mixta in the time of Isaiah. And for Luther, when he had his greatest doubts, this was his rock. This is what what he stood on. He said, I am baptised. I am baptised. Not I was baptised and it might have worn off. Not I baptised myself and maybe I was deluded. But I am baptised and in my baptism, I claim God's promises. It's a different sort of image, but it's the same type of image as we have with this rock and the quarry. What are we rooted in? What are we grounded in? What can we be secure in? And I hope we can be secure in knowing that we are heirs of Christ. We are adopted into his family. We are his children. By baptism, we too are secure in his family. 
And if we are in his family, then we should show that family likeness. We should be rocks hewn from that one quarry, rocks similar to the great rock from which we have come. We should show the values of grace, of mercy, of peace, of love. But for today, I think the message is that we can find a security, an identity in God. And whatever is happening in our per world, in our world of turbulence and confusion and uncertainty, we can know that we are God's. We are God's children. We can know. We can know that God loves us and holds us. That we are from his stock. And whatever happens in this world, we are secure in him. And we hold on to his promise that he is with us now. And we hold on to his promise that he has redeemed us. And we hold on to his promise of eternal life, of life with him, that he will take us to be with him in his kingdom. And so as we look at our great stone churches, as we look at the stone houses around us, as we walk the countryside and find these abandoned quarries. May we look to the rock from which we were hewn. May we know we are of God. May we know the quarry from which we were dug. And may we have confidence and faith so that we can be rocks to others. We can offer support to others in this difficult and turbulent and changing world. And if we are not sure, if we are not sure of God's love, if we are not sure of God's promise, I pray today that as we pray, as we ask God, so we will discover his assurance, the promise of his salvation and new life. May we look to the rock from which we are hewn. May we know that we are God's. I am a child of God not because of my merits, not because I deserve it, but because I am made in God's image, saved, redeemed, rescued by his death, welcomed and adopted, given new life, all because of God's grace. And our prayers today are led by John Kirk. In the power of the Spirit, and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. For the peace and health of the world. For all statesmen and leaders here and throughout the world, that they may have wisdom to know and the courage to do what is right. For all who work to improve international relations, that they may find the true way to remove conflict and bring friendship, including the United Nations Organisation, and the international work of the Scout and Guide movements. For all bishops and clergy, that they may have wisdom and foresight in leading our Church in future years, and for the work of the Church worldwide in bringing renewal and hope in these strange times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray especially for our leaders, both nationally and locally, as they work to provide the best framework for our children and grandchildren to return to school safely. For all teachers and support staff who work so hard to ensure their safety, and for all the scientists who are working tirelessly to find treatments and vaccines to control coronavirus, and all doctors and nurses who continue to put the welfare of patients before their own. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for men and women the world over that they may have justice and freedom and live in security and peace. Let us pray for those who suffer as a result of war, for the people of Syria, for the injured and disabled, for the homeless and refugees, for men and women whose employment and livelihoods are at risk as a result of the pandemic, for those whose lives are blighted by hatred and prejudice for those whose faith in God and man has been weakened or destroyed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us not forget to give thanks for and to celebrate our community and the beauty of the area where we live. 
the open skies, the hills and fields, and the glorious and changing colours of the countryside as we move into autumn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember those who are ill and also those known to us with long-term health problems, those being cared for at home, the housebound, those in residential care and all those who care for them. And we commend to God's care those who have died recently and those who is at death at this time in earlier years we recall. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of you, our Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we are taught by our Saviour, Saviour, let us pray with confidence together. Our Father, who art art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As we commend ourselves to God, we sing our second hymn, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. seek God's blessing. We pray that we may know his love, his peace, 
we may be assured in our faith and in hope. May God bless us. May God bless our families and our friends and our loved ones. May God watch over our homes and our communities. And we pray for God's kingdom blessings to bring hope, peace and justice to our world at this time. May we know the blessing of God Almighty. Amen. If you have enjoyed this service, do please join us, if you can, at one of our services in our churches.